this little video is not just about my role model, the bear. You guys who've watched this channel know that the bear is and will always be dear to my heart as my role model because he inspired my entire fasting journey and this very channel. But it answers some questions that some of you have about dry fasting versus water fasting versus one meal a day or one meal every two days, etc., etc., different types of fasting. Why does the bear go on a pure fast? And why do humans go on fasts of delayed gratification with reduced beverages or types of food? Well, this short little video here is going to clarify that once and for all. And this explains the differences that with the bear's body versus ours. But it also tells us in the process of why you need beverages, but it also tells you where you get your protein from. So for these people who don't believe in eating any protein or enough protein, you do have to rely, even the bear relies on their own muscle tissue to supplement them. And the body has a way of recycling waste products from the digestion of muscle to keep the bear healthy and strong. We don't have that mechanism, so when we fast, we have to make sure we're getting all of our nutrients, at least at some point. So this, this video is very educational and provides a lot of clarity. In the Rockies, winter often has a stronghold on the landscape by late October. With the first snow, food becomes even scarcer. What's still growing is soon buried in ice and will be hard to reach for six months or more. Before the land is locked in for the winter, even this big old grizzly will seek his den. While the rest of the world suffers through this brutal season, the hibernating bear becomes an efficient, totally self-contained unit of life. The exact combination of visual, chemical, and environmental signals that stimulate each bear to enter its den is still unknown. Perhaps the shorter days or the falling of the first snow triggers a hormonal response. Maybe the fat cells themselves induce hibernation. When the time comes, the bears simply crawl into their dens and go to sleep. Once inside the den, the bear curls into a ball. Within days, all the bear's body functions begin to change. The flow of blood is concentrated in its heart, its lungs, and its brain. The heart rate drops to 10 beats a minute respiration slows. Protected by its heavy winter coat and a thick layer of fat, the bear's body temperature remains a near normal 96 degrees Fahrenheit. In the digestive system, changes are radical. A hibernating bear consumes no food and passes no waste, so its stomach and its intestines cease to function and remain empty throughout the long winter sleep. But the substance of living cells must be constantly replenished. The bear needs water and protein and 4,000 calories every day. How it gets what it needs is one of nature's most remarkable achievements. Like a self-contained recycling furnace, the bear obtains everything from within its own body using intricate metabolic pathways that do not exist in other animals. From its fat, it extracts all the calories and water needed to run its body systems. From its muscle and other lean tissue, it obtains all the protein needed to thrive. One waste product that results is nitrogen urea. For all other animals, urea can become life-threatening. It quickly builds up to toxic levels, causing death in a matter of days. But the hibernating bear is uniquely equipped to benefit from the potentially deadly wastes in its body. In its kidneys and liver, it reprocesses the urea and manufactures amino acids. No other animal can do this. The amino acids recombine to make complex proteins. These new proteins recycle through its body and replace muscle and other tissue that was used for food. The bear meets all its food and water needs, keeps up muscle strength, and produces no waste.